how do plants multiply? Yeah, so through reproduction and propagation. Already some of you mentioned is reproduction and propagation. Uh, plant propagation is the process of growing new plants from variety of sources. How we'll go into reproduce? So either through seeds, cutting, already you mentioned, and other plant parts. Okay, so various other plant parts. So some you mentioned. So there are two two categories. One is sexual reproduction. Another one is vegetative reproduction or vegetative propagation. In sexual reproduction, pollen grains are the male reproductive structure. So that will come and land on the female flower. Okay, so stigma style ovary is a female part. This pollen grains will come and lodge on the stigma, and so that will germinate, and uh, that's called pollination. After pollination, fertilization will happen. We will get fruits and seeds. So if you sow those seeds. Okay, the plant will multiply. Okay, in natural habitat also, after seed dispersal, the seeds will fall on the ground. From there, you will get many seedlings. That's how actually plant multiply in the natural habitat. But in in cultivation, we will plant manually. So in vegetative propagation, okay. So why vegetative propagation? There is no involvement of <coughs> sex organs here. Either pollen grains are so ovary, egg, or ovule. Okay, so that's why it's a vegetative propagation. But what is the definition for that? Vegetative propagation is the process of multiplication of plants in which vegetative parts of the plant body functions as a propagule and develops into new individuals. Okay, so generally we know any seeds if you sow, so that will give rise to seedling. Okay, that gives rise to seedling. So that's a product of sexual reproduction. But apart from that, there are some other parts in the plant, so they are also capable of producing new plants. Okay, so those are called propagules. Okay, propagules. The only important thing you have to remember here, so this is happens without act of fertilization. That means there is no fertilization here. There is no involvement of sex organs. There is no involvement of pollen or pistil. Okay, so that's how so it will happen. So there are are uh, two type of vegetative propagation. Okay, so one is a natural vegetative propagation, and another one is a artificial vegetative. Propagation. Okay, some of you mentioned the names instead of natural and artificial. You mentioned the name. Someone mentioned layering. Okay, so that comes under artificial vegetative propagation. Someone mentioned runner. Okay, that will comes under natural vegetative propagation. Okay, so these there is no involvement of any sex organs. Okay, so that means our pollen or pistil. This is vegetative propagation. Okay, in vegetative propagation. Okay. So natural vegetative propagation will occur through root stem and leaf, whereas artificial vegetative propagation occurs cutting, grafting, and layering. Okay, cutting, grafting, and layering. Again, so cutting, grafting, layering uh, is a, again common question. Okay, in exam. Okay, so we may ask so artificial vegetative propagation for five marks or six marks. Okay, or we may ask individual what is cutting, what is grafting, what is layering for two marks question. Okay, so so you have to. Understand and learn some of these techniques. Okay, so why it is natural and why it is it is a uh, artificial. Why it is natural? This is common type of vegetative propagation in plants. Here, vegetative organs such as roots, stems, and leaves bear adventitious buds. Those are all called I told you propagules. Okay, vegetative propagules. Through this propagule, they will reproduce. They will multiply. Whereas in artificial propagation, okay, it does not occur naturally. Instead. It's a human induced, so because here, so it's a man-made structure. So we will get desired offspring. Okay. So why this is so important? That means suppose we have two plants. One is so giving very so big size fruit. Another one is giving very tasty fruit. So we can combine these two characters, and we can get big size as well as tasty fruits. Okay. So that's how actually artificial vegetative propagation is. So very important. Okay, so here we will get healthier plants, desired trait, desired trait in the character. Okay, so quality. Okay, and it's quite more rapid and efficient production. Okay, of offspring. So that means imagine in natural vegetative propagation, to get one plant, the plant has to produce in natural way. It has to produce uh, sexual reproduction. I'm telling sexual reproduction in natural vegetative propagation. Plant has to produce flower. Flower has to produce male and sex, female sex organs. Both are viable, and pollen grain has to transfer to the female flower. Then pollen tube has to germinate. It has to reach egg, and it has to fertilize. 
that will become fruit after fruit become so it has to mature then seed has to disperse okay, then the seed has to uh, germinate and gives rise to seedling it is a long process but here in artificial vegetative propagation so quick okay so quick rapid and efficient okay suppose i have a uh, hibiscus plant at home so just i can cut one twig and i can plant okay so next month i will get rape sprout within 2 to 3 months we will going to get flower also okay so that's how it's a quite rapid and we will get desired variety so this one is natural vegetative propagation this one is a artificial vegetative propagation okay so under natural vegetative propagation under artificial vegetative propagation we have several category okay so in natural vegetative propagation underground stem subaerial and aerial in artificial vegetative propagation we have cutting layering and grafting okay so in underground stem there are again four rhizome tuber bulb and corm in uh, subaerial we have sucker runner stolon and offset in aerial so bulb bills and leaf okay so these are categories so i told you so we may ask anything for two marks question here okay so i we may ask rhizome we may ask tuber we may ask bulb we may ask car okay you have you could able to answer this okay so uh, why these are either they comes under flower production okay in your garden or in your landscape uh, terrace gardening vertical gardening string gardening tp gardening okay and uh, bonsai cocodema so various techniques are there so in one or the other way you are going to use these techniques to multiply them so that's why it's very important to know so here i am giving one one example from various aspects some from flowers some from fruits okay some from vegetables okay you if you remember that much is more than enough suppose if you want to do even home garden okay just for vegetables you can use some of these techniques okay again artificial vegetative propagation majority for fruits and uh, flowers okay so majority is actually floral industry and even for gardening they use a lot okay artificial vegetative propagation so let's start with a uh, underground uh, stem okay underground stem why they are underground stem because their main stem and its branches lie below the surface of the soil and store food material and helps perennation perennation mean even in dry condition it will sustain okay when condition is favorable it will germinate and gives rise to new plant so that is called perennation so they are non green and resembles roots okay so they are non green in color but resembles roots that's why we call underground uh, stem but uh, though they look like root but why we call it as a stem because they have nodes and internodes they have adventitious roots they have a scale leaves they have axillary buds etc okay so that's why we call them as a stem so examples are rhizome tuber bulb and car okay so let's start uh, one by one okay first one is a rhizome okay again rhizome is a perennial structure main axis of the plant which grows indefinitely below the soil okay below the soil it can grow it will grow indefinitely it produce leaves or shoots above and adventitious roots below okay suppose no what is rhizome okay it produce adventitious roots below uh, most of the rhizome are fleshy store reserve food material so why the name rhizome instead of stem instead of stem or instead of um, root because it looks like root but it is a stem that's why the name rhizome rhizome is a root okay so they differentiate it into nodes and internodes the nodes bear brown scale leaves and protect the axillary bud so maybe you are wondering so what is this rhizome by seeing this example you may understood what is rhizome okay so ginger example is a ginger if you see here okay so the below what the edible part what we are using the ginger so that is not actually root that is stem okay there is a modified uh, stem so you can see here nodes and internodes and there are scaly leaves are present okay and there are adventitious roots also so only above ground you will going to get a shoots okay but otherwise the underground rhizome is a underground rhizome is a stem so this is again an example for natural vegetative propagation so to to multiply this just you take so fleshy ginger and you can so sow it okay so in a sand okay or in a soil so it will multiply easily it will multiply so you can make use of that so there is another example 
for a natural vegetate to propagation underground stem is a tuber okay so the tubers are swollen and sub specialized underground stem okay so these are also underground generally what we understood so far roots are always below ground okay stems are above ground okay so that's what actually what we understood so far but here it is not the case in the even previous case rhizome when it comes to tuber okay so though these are all stem but they are underground okay so they are so below ground so they are all a spherical in shape which do not bear adventitious roots so each tuber bears spirally arranged depressions called eyes okay so please remember this eyes okay the spirally arranged depressions called eyes so be calm so these are very important when i show the picture so when they are placed in the soil the axillary buds grow out in the form of branches and the aerial shoots by using the stored food material okay these underground stem that is called tuber in this tuber they store lots of food material by using this food material okay the buds will grow through the eyes okay so these tubers are used for vegetative propagation okay you can see example is a potato okay example is a potato so if you see in potato at home sometimes if we keep potato for long time you may see some growth okay some branches buds okay buds will develop so gradually once this plant develop above ground so in below ground it will multiply okay it will multiply you will get more potatoes the markings okay the depressions those are not called eyes so these are nothing but nodes from those depressions only the new plant okay the bud will develop okay, and here and there you can see some small scaly leaves this is an example for tuber so here also sometimes you can multiply cut this two to three pieces and you can plant so then you will get a shoots and below ground you will get a tubers okay so that means potato so this is second example for underground stem and third one is a bulb so what are these bulbs okay, again these are also underground okay so underground structure spherical modified shoot having highly reduced disc and uh, disc shaped stem and several plesi scales enclosing the terminal bud okay the stem does not store any reserve food material again i am telling this because these are all comes under your home gardens so in your home gardens you can plant this and you can harvest okay i told you in the very first class gardens are not only just now aesthetic purpose but also people want to get some monetary benefit out of this okay until they were there in the garden so they are greenish in color they give some aesthetic value once they mature you can harvest those okay and you can make use of that okay so that's how we can balance you can maintain your garden too so it bears a large number of fibrous adventitious roots and its base and several fleshy seeding leaf bases on the upper side okay and again the leaf bases bear axillary buds which grows into new plants under favorable condition okay so maybe by seeing all this definition and examples you may wondering what is this bulbs okay so bulbs are nothing but onion garlic lilies daffodils and tulips okay so of course not only for vegetable garden but also for your flower garden okay for lilies daffodils and tulips also they develop similar way okay so the example what i gave so far is this okay these are our underground actual stem is this these are our seeding leaf base i don't know how many of you seen so this will develop green shoots okay the onion will develop green shoots so that's also edible okay so this is how it will develop similar way even lilies daffodils and tulips also so these are also very popular flowers in the garden even commercial as well as for a aesthetic value I mean just to grow the in the, in the garden so they also produce similar bulbs okay so they so no cuttings nothing just you should bring these bulbs and plant them okay they will grow so this again easy to propagate just you have to harvest bulbs once you plant them the plant will multiply so you can from there you can transplant for many other places these bulbs okay through these bulbs so this is about bulbs this is the third category under underground stem in natural vegetative propagation method and fourth one is a calm okay so fourth one is a calm so this is again so looks like 
your bulb or your uh, tuber, but it's very condensed. Plus is solid and vertically growing rootstock with a large apical bed. It has a single apical bed. Okay. So, and uh, additionally, so it is a flattened structure and it has excessive deposition of food material. It has a lots of food in it. Okay. And it is usually unbranched. Okay. And bears adventitious roots, which is arise from the basal portion. And each comb has no circular nodes with scales and one or more axillary buds also present. So through that bud, actually it will multiply. We can detach, okay, we can detach that and we can plant it somewhere else, okay. If you're not disturbed also, it will multiply underground, okay. And now then we can harvest and we can make use of that, okay. So what is the example? A gladiolus and crocus, okay. So gladiolus, crocus and amorphophallus, okay. So you can see the flower gladiolus and amorph crocus, okay. So this looks like onion, right? But this is calm. Okay, the structure is calm. This flesh is solid and uh, vertically growing rootstock with large apical bud. So then to propagate this plant, okay. So crocus or gladiolus or marfophallus, okay. The only way is you have to underground to produce lots of these combs. You can harvest these combs and we can plant it somewhere else. Okay, just whatever I told. See here, the enormous number of comms are there. Whatever media I told, soil media, media, other nutrient media, and some other menu system. So if you if you sow them, so it will germinate and gives rise to the plant what you want. Okay, either gladiolus, the flower, crocus, this is for okay. So case again edible uh, use for cooking. Okay, and again amorphophallus vegetable which is used for cooking okay so these are all so part of this cow so we have completed underground stem under that rhizome tuber bulb and cow okay so please remember okay next one is a sub aerial okay sub -aerial. so what is sub -aerial? i mean previous case is underground so next one is a sub -aerial. okay here the stem gets modified to help in vegetative propagation Okay, the stem get modified to help in vegetative propagation. Uh, here, the sub aerial stems branches to produce new shoots and roots, in turn, helps in propagation. So, they are of four types suckers, runners, stolon, and offset. Someone mentioned in the Mentimeter, offset and runners. They are not either aerial, they are not completely above ground, or they are not completely below ground. Okay, so they are in between. That's why they called sub aerial. Okay, so these are the examples suckers, runners, stolon, and offset. So what are the suckers? Okay, so these are all scientific terms given. Okay, so don't confuse with one another. So a rooted shoot arising from the underground portion of a plant is called sucker. Okay, so again I'll repeat. Rooted shoot arising from the underground portion of a plant is called suckers. It may be developed from adventitious buds of the stem or buds of the root. Okay, the suckers develop new roots from their base and uh, lead independent life okay so they live independent life so once the suckers are detached from the parent plant and are planted in the field as a seedling okay, this is how actually we can develop them even without disturbing also they multiply on their own but if you really want more fruits okay so or more plants from that so you can detach that and you can plant them in the field what is the example banana and chrysanthemum Okay, banana and chrysanthemum are example for this suckers. I don't know how many of you have seen this banana plant at backyard or chrysanthemum, some plants if you grow at home. If you plant just one banana plant, so below that you can see so many shoots. Okay, so it will multiply like anything. So maybe next year it will become few. Okay, one, two, some six, seven, eight, like that. And below that you can see some of the shoots, okay, sharp shoots. Those are nothing but suckers. So those suckers are developed from adventitious buds of either stem or through root. Okay. So then, so if you leave, they only develop from there in the same place. Or if you really want for further growth and multiply, just you detach that sucker along with some root and you plant it somewhere else. Okay. So that will develop and that will germinate. Okay. So this is called suckers. So even for a banana production, they will develop through suckers only. Even chrysanthemum also, 
So same, so they will do. They will do. They will produce circles. If you plant one, it will multiply and gives rise to many. Then you can detach from that main plant, and you can replant them in many places, and you will get a so huge number of seedling, sapling, and you will get a wood flower. Okay. So this is how you can easily multiply this circle. So then runner some stolon. Someone mentioned in the mentimeter runner some stolon. So they are side shoots which grow out from the parent plant. So they are side shoots. Okay. So they creep up, kind of creep up. These modified branches which creep over the surface of the soil. Each modified branch develops axillary buds at points along the runner. Eventually the bud develops roots and grow into new shoots. So once I show the picture, you will understand. Okay. Axillaries and strawberry. Okay. You have eaten so many. So some of, some of you eaten uh, strawberry, right? Strawberry cake, strawberry chocolate. Like how? So they that will multiply. Okay, you can see here. Okay, so at some point of time, some some point of distance, the root will develop, and above you will get a shoots. So gradually, some branches. These are all called modified branches or side shoots. These side shoots will start creeping over on the soil, and at some point of time, they will touch the ground. So wherever they touch the ground, they will produce roots below again, shoots above. So like that, gradually it will cover. So even axial is also so similar way. So this is a single plant, shoots above, roots below. Then the side shoots, they creep over on the soil. So wherever the soil, the shoots touches the soil, okay. So there it will produce roots below again, shoots below. Like that, it will grow gradually. Okay, so many meters, so thick carpet-like structure you can observe. Okay, so even so in <clears throat> strawberry also similar structures will develop. We will multiply like this. Okay, runners and stolons. <coughs> this is second type, second and third type of um, vegetative reproduction, subaerial method. And fourth one under subaerial method is actually uh, you can see in. Hycarnia pistia and some cactus. Suppose if you if you grow some cactus at home, or if you want to grow some of these Hycarnia pistia uh, in your water garden, or you have some garden there, some supporting structure or decor. If you have a small pond, you want to grow some of these type of plants. So you have to learn about this offset. So they are condensed runner. Okay, they looks like runner. But they are condensed runner, usually found in rosette plants. Okay, so what are rosette plants? Pistia, Carnia, and Cactus. So each offset produces at its apex a tuft leaves above and cluster of roots below. So how? So look at here. So this is Pistia and this is Icarnia. I don't know many of you have seen. So this is Icarnia. Okay, so in water bodies. Okay, water hyacinth. We also call it a water hyacinth. If you properly observe, but it's a offset is a runner of uh, aquatic ecosystem, cluster of leaves below and tuft of leaves above. Okay, and they are arranged in a rosette manner. Okay, so from one point the many shoots arises. So this is a rosetting manner, and they will scraping on the surface of the water again at certain distance. Again they will produce roots. Okay, cluster of roots again. So cluster of shoots above. So like this, it will cover entire area. So maybe if you want to multiply in many places, okay. So we can detach. You can cut it from here. And we can plant them. So then, so it will multiply. Even in the water body, if you just like this also, it can multiply. Uh, so that's how. So we can eventually increase the number. Okay, through offset. Example, like Carnia, Christian, some cactus. Species. Okay, so across the world again, cactus are very popular. Okay, so some of the succulents and easy to take care, not require much water. Okay, so that's how. So and also so in terms of aesthetic value. Okay, so beautiful cactus also we can see some will, some will produce flowers, some may not. But again, the appearance itself is a so very beautiful. Okay, so those are all multiplied naturally through offset. Okay, so, so this is fourth type under. Uh, sub aerial the last one in today's class aerial okay so aerial means they produce above ground okay they produce above ground so they are <coughs> either in the form of flower or in the form of leaf 
okay so these are all called bulb bills okay these are all called bulb bills they store food material okay this bulb bill will store food material okay so <coughs> and when they falls on the ground they germinate into new plants okay so here so there is no involvement of any pollen or pistil okay so directly they will falls and develop into new uh, plant body okay so first one is underground second one is a subaerial now it's a aerial so there are two examples one is axillary bulb bill another one is a floral bud bulb bill okay floral bud bulb bill so maybe you might have seen axillary bud bulb bill okay so lilium bulb bill for a manta dioscorea bulb bill fera okay you can see here the bulb is developed in the axil okay see here in the axil you can see a bulb bill this is again store lots of food material so at maturity it will fall off and develop into new plant so this is again lilium bulbiferum some plants flowering plants we can multiply through this bulb bill you collect this bulb bill and if you sow so they will germinate and give us new plant so here also this is dioscorea bulbifera again what we are eating tubers dioscorea gives lots of edible tubers okay and uh, another one is a floral bud bulb bill okay. so here so some of the inflorescence okay some of the inflorescence actually convert rather than producing flowers they themselves transform into bulb bills okay so the bulb bills i told you bulb bills so bulb bills are bulb like structure and uh, so they are part of vegetative propagation and they store lots of food material so that's why they could be able to use this new plants when they detach from the parent plant okay so these are all so floral bud bulb bill okay again so example is agave okay so just you have an idea so what are these like a aerial uh, type of uh, natural vegetative propagation and here propagules are uh, here ordinary bud bulb bills and here floral bud bulb bills yeah so last one is actually leaf modification i don't know many of you have seen this plant bryophyllum okay so many houses i have seen So they are growing this as an ornamental plant, okay, and it's a succulent and easy to take care. Okay, so not required much water, and also it multiply rapidly. Okay, so see, maybe this is serrate. Okay, serrate type, the saw shaped uh, leaf edge. Okay, red zest and furrows. So here in these notches, you will get buds. Just what you have to do, just you can pluck up. leaf and you can so keep it on a sand or soil so generally and water it okay so you uh, cover with some sand and water it regularly after few days okay the leaf buds will develop the leaf buds will develop okay so when these buds drop off they develop into new plant okay or else after maturity okay after some time you may only transfer this leaf buds are seeding to some other parts okay it multiply easily in fact it will develop beautiful flowers also okay so nice orange color flowers it will develop and uh, even any rocky area and there is less water okay and even for rock garden this is very suitable plant okay so this is bryophyllum i have used innumerable photographs from various sources especially from the internet for study purpose I hereby acknowledge the respective people and also respective website for their lively and informative photographs. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe the channel for more videos and updates.